Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Thomas Bach. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about my top new five VPNs for the end of 2023 going into 2024. Now this video is primarily for people looking for a VPN, but if you're already using a VPN, this video can also be helpful because it can kind of decide to help you choose which one to pick. Now keep in mind guys, this channel contains no sponsors. I don't have any paid sponsorships on the channel, whether that be for products or anything. And these rankings are definitely not influenced by sponsors. Not only that, but I'm one of the only channels out there with no YouTube ads, which means when you watch my channel, if there is ads on it, it's because YouTube is forcing them down your throat and I refuse to put any ads on my videos because VPNs help to block ads. Why would I put them on my videos? Lastly, guys, the only way this channel makes money is through affiliate links. So that means if you click on any of my links in this channel, whether that be my VPN recommendations, use my discounts. It helps directly support these videos so I can make videos just like this going into the future to keep you guys updated what the best VPNs are. So if you do want to help support the channel, make sure to click the links in the description down below um, for each of these VPNs if you decide to pick one. If you don't want to help support the channel, if you don't like what I'm doing here, if you don't find my content helpful, you don't have to click on any of those links and this content is completely free. All right, guys, let's get into the picks. All right, guys, so number one, of course, is Torgard, the top rated VPN here on the channel. So who is this VPN for? Well, by far, as you can see, it is the cheapest VPN long and short term. It's only around $5 a month or $30 a year with my promo code TomSpark2023. Uh, for three years, it's around $70. The con of that though is that Torgor does have a wide variety of different packages to choose from, whether that means the streaming bundle, bundles that include dedicated IPs, bundles that include the new private cloud service, which is like self-hosting your own VPN and services. They have various cloud apps. Um, they also have encrypted email. They have a lot of focus on routers too that you could put VPN on. So for noobs, it can be kind of confusing to buy the right thing with Torgor. For most people, I would just recommend the regular VPN package. Um, but TorGuard is one of those websites that has a lot of different options for a wide variety of users. So it's kind of like a pro and a con in my opinion. Another con is that the application on PC feels a little outdated compared to some other VPNs. Connecting takes a little bit longer, just like a second or two. Um, you have to disconnect to switch servers. You can't look at the settings when you're connected. A couple of those things really should have been fixed a number of years ago and are still kind of, kind of bogging down the usability factor, I would say. It still looks pretty good, but that said, some people do find that really annoying. Another thing is you do need some additional upcharges like with add-ons to work with services like Netflix. And it's really one of the only services that continues to do this. However, some may think that getting your own IP means it can be a little bit more reliable. I've heard from some people that their IPs can get blocked, but TorGuard is usually pretty good about reissuing another IP. And that leads me to my next support. Uh, uh, point about TorGuard is that their customer support is legendary. I would say probably from any VPN, they probably offer the best customer support. The team here really does seem to care about its customers and you could find that uh, pretty easily from, uh, I've seen so many comments on my channel praising the support in my Discord um, and stuff like that. So they respond usually within minutes, which is pretty damn good. Another thing about it, it has a very good track record, really no issues of security vulnerabilities. Um, it has really good privacy practices as well. They don't collect hardly any information on you when you visit their website or the user applications. So all around, definitely a solid VPN with its pros and cons, depending on your specific use case. If you're someone to look, you're looking to use a VPN for everything, whether that includes streaming compatibility, I don't know if this is the pick, but if you're someone who's very budget oriented, wants good speeds, a good company, and you just want to torrent with it, this is probably a very solid pickup. Next up on the tier list is a VPN called Surfshark. Now Surfshark is very different from Torgar. Um, you know, with Surfshark, it has a little bit too many analytics on its website. It uses it primarily for marketing and learning about its users so it can kind of make more money. Um, it doesn't have the best privacy practices in terms of its tracking in that way of its user base. However, that said, it does kind of have a more corporate benefit in that it has a very nice interface. The interface looks brand spanking new. I think they actually updated it recently. It's very fluid and intuitive to use compared to something like TorGuard. It's very similar to NordVPN and we'll be discussing that next because it's kind of like a sister company owned by the same kind of companies. Um, 
The thing I like about Surfshark the most probably is it has very, very good bundled deals. Um, you could get a service called Incogni, which is a very strong service and removes your information from the internet from data brokers like um, white pages and those kind of things so you can't get doxxed. Um, they also include some other nifty things like antivirus and stuff like that. So if you're looking for an all-encompassing security solution, I would actually say Surfshark is one of the best ones out there for your anonymity and privacy, and it's a pretty good deal for what you get. The VPN itself though has very fast speeds, works great with streaming services and stuff like that. So overall, my main cons are that some of the deals are only good long-term, short-term it's not that affordable. And like I said, it does kind of use a little bit um, too many Google Analytics and those kind of things on its website. Some people don't care about this, some do, so it's really up to you. Next up, we have a VPN called NordVPN. Now this one is probably one of the most popular ones out there. You've probably seen it advertised and stuff like that. And that is kind of one of the cons, just like with Surfshark. It's a similar company owned by the same kind of company, I think, um, or I know, but the kind of corporate structure is a little hairy. Uh, they're just kind of, there's like one company that owns a couple of these different VPNs, Nord, Atlas, and Surfshark, all kind of like owned by that same company. But with Nord, uh, just like Surfshark, they have Google Analytics on the website. They do a little bit too much tracking for their own kind of intents and purposes to make more sales. You know, they are a business, so some people don't mind that. Um, another con is that they really only are affordable long term. That said, there are some clear strengths here. Nord is extremely easy to use. It probably has one of the best tutorials in its product, you know, from any VPN. It just makes it so easy to use from the get go. You can really tell they kind of designed this VPN for anyone to use it. That's probably because they marketed it to like everyone. That said, it's also very good for unblocking streaming services. Probably one of the best one. I think it works with like 10 or 15 different regions. So if you like using Netflix, you like using VPNs, going to different places, checking out new content libraries, this is the one to pick. It has very fast speeds. It's also probably one of my preferred VPNs for using the Soxfy proxy. Lately, I've been getting a little bit better speeds with Soxfy proxy than TorGuard, which means you can put a URL into Qubit Torrent and just download torrents and not have to worry about leaking your IP. I've made up several videos about Soxfy proxies versus VPNs, so if you don't know the difference, go ahead and check those out. Like Surfshark, it also has a decent bundle, including password manager, drive and a couple other different services they've created which can be a pretty good value proposition if you don't have those already or if you want to just get them all included all right guys so that's nordvpn definitely could be a solid pickup next on the list is a vpn called hide.me and this one is probably the least well known out of all the vpns on this list that said i do think it is a pretty good vpn provider it works decently with streaming services like netflix it has a pretty good application with pretty good features like ad blocking and everything you'd really expect including wireguard kill switches and stuff like that i do think it's probably one of the best price vpns for what you specifically get that said, there are some serious cons, I do think. Um, despite its fact it's one of the top rated VPNs, for me specifically, I just don't get very good speeds with it. I don't know if this is a much of an issue for people in the EU or other parts of the world. I've talked to the team on numerous cases and they said they do plan to improve the speeds in the US and United States. So it's something to think about um, if you're there. I've also not really been able to get the stock side proxy working very well. It seems a little clunky. I'm not sure if it even works, but I haven't really had anyone in my audience just talk about it or say they've had any issues with it, but they also might not be using that feature. Um, lastly, I would say my thing about hide.me, it does feel a little bit like a jack of all trades VPN, master of none. It doesn't especially excel in any one area. It doesn't have the fastest speeds. The application isn't really the best. It's not the cheapest. Um, it just kind of does everything pretty well. Um, so that's something to kind of think about um, if this sounds good to you. Um, it's kind of hard to recommend to people sometimes for a specific, it's like a specific product for a product that doesn't feel very specific. Um, but that said, it's not the worst VPN. It definitely deserves to be rated on this list because it, as an aggregate, it scores very high. All right, guys, lastly, we have a VPN called Proton VPN. Now, this one is interesting because it does kind of have a cult following on places like Reddit and other places. Um, that's because it's kind of honed in on some of the things people value, like open sourcing the application, having no trackers on its website. Um, it also is very popular because Proton Mail is very popular and that suite of products kind of goes with it and kind of makes each of the other products more popular. It works decently with streaming services like Netflix. As an aggregate, it scores very high as a VPN provider. 
That said, it is probably the most expensive VPN on this list. It doesn't have very good long-term deals. It doesn't have very good short-term deals. Um, it just really isn't that affordable. That said, it is affordable if you do want encrypted email, drive support, and some of those extra add-ons per month to month. It's really only around $13, um, which is pretty much the same price of Surfshark and Nord. And for month to month, you get also the other products too. That said, long term, it does get pretty pricey. And like I said, it's still just not that affordable. I would say that Proton VPN as a company is a bit odd to me. Sometimes I feel their team can be a bit sensitive to criticism. In the past, I've had issues with that personally with the team, but I've tried to not let that influence my reviews. I always like to be able to say whatever I want. And sometimes it can be annoying when VPNs try to kind of, kind of, interrupt that process. I think my kind of interactions with the team uh, are kind of reflected also as well in user reviews of the product. You can see on Trustpilot, it actually has a pretty low score. Uh, a lot of people seem to have poor support responses. Um, I will say in ProtonVPN's uh, defense though, um, they do seem to be one of the few VPNs that are not buying reviews on Trustpilot. I think too many VPNs are buying reviews on Trustpilot. You'll see six to 8,000 reviews for some of these VPNs that are probably uh, buying reviews, Trustpilot, at least for Proton VPN, it does seem to be pretty honest. They don't really seem to be buying reviews. Uh, if you compare like some other VPNs, they have like 26,000 uh, reviews. Uh, it just doesn't seem very legitimate to me. I'm not accusing these VPNs of anything, but uh, that's at least in Proton's just defense. But that said, you know, it does seem like some people do have some issues with accounts being closed, poor support, things like that. I think some of it could be that Proton is a free VPN service as well, which means you can have a trial. So there are going to be some people having issues with that service that I don't think are getting helped. They don't get priority or support. I think even, even the live chat is only available for paid members, so that could influence this as well. The team, it kind of tries to separate Proton VPN from Proton Mail but they're the same kind of branded products. They kind of say they're separate companies, but I mean, they're all kind of the same, really, you know, it's the same brand. So I see a lot of cross pollination of users that like one, like the other. If people don't like Proton Mail, they don't like Proton VPN. Um, so there's a lot of kind of scandals that kind of hindered the brand in different ways. You know, Proton Mail had some kind of incident with metadata, giving away metadata on a couple of users requested by the police. Um, this led to kind of some of the privacy policies being changed with Proton Mail. And thus, like I said, that makes people not like Proton VPN. Um, so Proton VPN hasn't really had those exact same scandals, but it's still part of the brand. Um, so that's just something to kind of think about um, when choosing a VPN, if that's important to you. I just thought that was worth mentioning, but it's definitely a solid pickup as an aggregate score. Anyways, guys, those are my final thoughts. Let me know what you picked down in the description down below. Let me know what your favorite VPN is. Let me know if you use one of my affiliate links. And if you like the channel, come check out the discord and talk with me personally. I'm pretty active there as so is the community and I'll see you guys very soon.